I'm gonna do my best to explain crop factor on this episode of Micromatic. If you've spent any time amongst camera communities, you know, forums, reddits, whatever, or you're reading camera reviews, you've probably heard the term crop factor. Maybe you have a loose understanding of what crop factor means, but uh, I'm gonna take a minute and I'm gonna explain crop factor the way that I understand it. First, I'm gonna start with a really high level definition of crop factor, okay? Crop factor is a very, very basic formula for understanding how the field of view that you get through a given lens will change depending on which camera you have it attached to. For any given camera system, you've probably got dozens of lenses to choose from. And the primary difference between those lenses is the focal length. So now focal length, uh, it's a measurement of some internal bits of the lens. It's not super important exactly what focal length measures. Uh, what is important to understand is that focal length determines the field of view, the angle of view that you're gonna get with your lens. Let's go back a couple of decades. Before digital cameras were the standard, 35 millimeter film was the standard, okay? And if you took, you know, if you were, let's say a Canon shooter back in those days, and you use different lenses, you might find that you really like the field of view that you get with a 50 millimeter lens, right? That's a, that's a pretty standard lens. Most photographers had a 50 millimeter lens in their backpack. What's cool is that if you were to jump to a Nikon camera system or a Leica camera system, they all use the same film size. So you, if you want to get that same angle of view, you know to get a 50 millimeter lens. If I want a more telephoto field of view, right, a narrower field of view that kind of brings the image closer to me, uh, you get a longer focal length. Let's say a 100 millimeter lens. You put a 100 millimeter lens on those the Canon system, you're going to get that telephoto field of view. And the same applies for the Nikon and the Leica camera systems, right? The old film camera systems. If you want that same 100 millimeter field of view from the Canon, you just get a 100 millimeter lens because they all have the same film size. So now if I take that same 50 millimeter film lens and I put that onto a, a crop camera, like my Micro Four Thirds, right? They're crop sensors. Uh, if I take that same lens, put it on that camera system, it's actually gonna give me a totally different field of view. What I used to know as the 50 millimeter field of view is now totally different because I'm using a, a camera system with a different size sensor. The reason behind this is that the field of view that you get into your camera is a combination of uh, mathematics and geometry and stuff that includes the focal length of your lens and the size of your image sensor. No photographers out there are doing the math to try and figure out exactly what lens they want to get a given field of view. They just kind of instinctively know this from experience. And a lot of people have experience with the old 35 millimeter film cameras. And so that's why crop factor is such a commonly used tool. You know, people are, had a lot of experience using lenses on the old film cameras, right? They're used to understanding exactly what kind of angle of view they're gonna get with the 50 millimeter lens. And they wanna understand how that's gonna change as they move to a crop body camera, like a Micro Four Thirds or a Fujifilm mirrorless camera. No matter which camera system I put this 50 millimeter lens onto, the, this lens is gathering the same amount of light, right? This lens is seeing the exact same thing and it's projecting the same image inside of the camera. The only difference is that the image sensor inside the camera that, that you know, the lens is projecting the image onto, that image sensor is different sizes depending on which camera you get. And so this is kind of, this is why the term crop factor comes into play is that you, know, you have this projecting an image, let's say this size, it's not that big, but let's say it's projecting an image this size for your old film camera. Uh, the Micro Four Thirds sensor is actually only this size. And so it's basically cropping out some of the image, right? And, and, and that's, that's where the term crop factor comes from. So back to my old film camera, this 50 millimeter lens on an old film camera is gonna give me a field of view equal to about 47 degrees, okay? Let's just imagine like I have a 47 degree angle. Uh, if I were to take a 100 millimeter lens, right? That's a, a longer focal length put on that same film camera, I'm gonna get a narrower field of view. I'm gonna get a field of view that's closer to about 24 degrees. It's too many numbers. I don't like, I don't like it. Okay, just, just keep these, just kind of remember these numbers. So now I take this same 50 millimeter lens and I put it on my Micro Four Thirds camera via an adapter like this. 
like I said, it's not gonna give me the 47 degrees that I was used to a 50 millimeter giving me. In fact, when I put this lens on a Micro Four Thirds camera, it's gonna give me a 24 degree field of view, which is just like the 100 millimeter lens on the old film camera. So in terms of the field of view that you get with a lens, this 50 millimeter lens on a Micro Four Thirds camera is the same as using a 100 millimeter lens on an old film camera. And this is where, this is again, this is the reason that crop factor, this formula exists, is because people have all this experience with those old film cameras and they want to understand, uh, you know, this is, I understand what a 100 millimeter field of view means. Uh, what does that mean for me on these new camera systems? So the common crop factor you're going to see mentioned with Micro Four Thirds is 2.0, okay? And that just means that if I want to find out uh, this 50 millimeter lens, if I want to find out what field of view it's going to give me, I multiply it by 2.0, just two, uh, I get 100 millimeters. And so that's where you understand, that's how it's easy to understand that a 50 millimeter lens on this camera system will give me the same field of view as a 100 millimeter lens on a film camera system. Now, importantly, this is crucial, okay? Importantly, the focal length of the lens is not actually changing as I put you know, this 50 millimeter lens on my Micro Four Thirds camera. It's still a 50 millimeter lens, no matter which camera system I put it on. Uh, the only thing that's changing is the angle of view that the camera is going to capture. And that's just because the camera has a smaller image sensor. The math also works the other way around. Let's say I really like the field of view that this 50 millimeter lens gives me on my old film camera, and I want the same field of view on Micro Four Thirds. Again, if I adapt this and put it on Micro Four Thirds, I'm gonna get a totally different field of view, but I want this field of view. How do I get it? Here's how you get it. You take that same 2.0 and you divide 50 by two equals 25. So if you want this field of view on a Micro Four Thirds camera, you get a 25 millimeter lens and you put it on the Micro Four Thirds camera. A couple of points to keep in mind when you're considering crop factor. One, uh, a lot of different camera systems will have different crop factor numbers, basically different multipliers that you're gonna have to keep in mind, right? Let's say you're on a Fujifilm mirrorless camera system that has a crop factor of 1.5. So if I were to take this again, let's go back to this 50 millimeter lens. If I want this 47 degree field of view on a, on a, on a, a 1.5 crop factor camera system, I'm gonna have to oh, divide 50 millimeters by 1.5, that's difficult math. Here's a cheat sheet, it's roughly 35, 35 millimeters. So you take a 35 millimeter lens, put it on your Fuji mirrorless camera, you're gonna get basically the same field of view that this would have given you on a film camera. And then let's go the other way around. Let's say I want to use this lens on my Fuji camera, I have to multiply the, the focal length by 1.5, which is, let's say it's 75. Uh, and that means that if I put this lens on a Fuji camera, it's gonna give me the same field of view that a 75 millimeter lens would have given me on an old film camera. Now you pretty much know everything you need to know about crop factor. Uh, there are some people that take crop factor a little bit further and apply it to things like aperture. And there's a little bit of truth behind it, but it's not totally accurate. In my opinion, applying crop factor to aperture, not really worth doing. Um, really the main thing that crop, the main problem the crop factor this formula is trying to solve is again back to what i originally said crop factor is for understanding how the field of view of a given focal length is going to change as you move from camera system to camera system because again a lot of people have experience with old film cameras and they you know they they instinctively know what a 50 millimeter field of view is and it's just going to be different on these newer crop body camera systems. But you already know that, so I'm not gonna say it again. Uh, if you've learned something today, and I hope you have, uh, go ahead and hit the like button down below. And if you want more videos like this, you can subscribe to the channel, and then I'll see you in the next episode of Micromatic.